Hey, this is Terry Thompson, and I'm about ready to be on the Online Prosperity Show with Prosper. Oh, my goodness. You are in for such a treat because we are going to dive down the entire leadership library here of what I've learned over 30 years of knowledge, skills, and experience. We're going to walk you through some frameworks here to help you become the leader that you are meant to be and others deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Taravinga, your guide to online prosperity. And today, we've got a powerhouse in the studio. Terry, how are you doing, my man? Man, every day is Monday, and I love it, man. Let's rock. I like that mindset and uh, everything else that's got um, you know to do with Monday. A lot of people have Monday-itis, but... I don't think that's the same with you right there. And for those that are wondering what we're talking about, we're going to be talking to uh, Terry Thompson. He's not just a motivational speaker or somebody who wears T-shirts that say every day is a Monday. He's an author, an entrepreneur, and he's also a leadership expert with not only one year, two or three, but 30 years of wisdom under his belt so in some circles that's a whole generation isn't it terry absolutely 100 percent, man it's you know leadership i truly believe is is what is needed within this world right now and man i'm i'm excited about it and i'm excited about uh, the opportunities of what leadership can bring to the world I love that. I love that because so many people would think leadership is to do with, you know, the um, hierarchy in a place, but you could lead yourself, you could lead your family, you could lead your health, your wealth, your relationships and everything else that comes along with it. And I can't wait to jump into all of that stuff. So for those that are watching right now, just get ready to uncover the secrets, um, you know, of success as Terry is going to take us on a journey from deciding, thinking and acting to achieving those desired results. It's not just something you stumbled onto, it's something you actually have to make a, you know, a formidable decision. And that's the reason why he calls every single day a Monday. Now, this is probably not just gonna be an interview because me and Terry, um, you know, we've just been arm wrestling behind and he's been telling me a little bit about what it is that he does. And um, I think we are about to enter into a masterclass in leadership and entrepreneurship. Now, Terry, I think I could go on and on and on and we would run out of days of the week. But as you say, every day is a Monday. Now, just give us a glimpse of who Terry Thompson is and just the story behind um, you becoming a motivational speaker, author and entrepreneur. Prosper, first and foremost, I want to say thank you so much for taking uh, time out of your day. Thank you for the opportunity to allow me to come on your show and share not only my story, but my message as well, too, because I truly believe that leadership is needed right now within this world. In a, in a likership economy, we need leadership. And what I mean by that is, is that with the advent of social media, we have so many things that are out there that we all want to be liked. I get it. Facebook, we have likes. Instagram, we have likes. All these platforms, we have likes. I blame social media on the likership economy, but what we really need is leadership. And what that means to me is, is that we really need leaders within this world to have the courage and the confidence to stand up stand out, speak up and speak out and allow their voice to be heard, not only for the sake of likes, but for the sake of leading exactly the people that they are in charge of. And that's the people. So my name is Terry Thompson. I am not only a motivational speaker, I am an author. I am a leadership expert, training developer, course developer. I work with some of the big names to include Evan Carmichael and so many more, you know, and I've got over 30 years of knowledge, skills, and experience, which I truly believe is the one thing that sets us all apart. We have knowledge, we have skills, but it is our experience that when we share that, we are able to give others an experience as well, too. And that's what I want to share with you here today, because I truly believe that in a world of likership, we need leadership. And that's what I'm here to share with you is how to be the best leader that you can be so that others deserve and that you must be in this world today. I like that. And thank you so much for, you know, getting us up to speed with uh, the stuff that you do. And a big shout out to the guys from Believe Nation. I've always watched uh, even Carmichael doing his stuff out there and all the like. Now, 
you just don't stumble into things like this, all right? You know, something would have happened and, um, you know, or you would have been inspired by, um, you know, somebody who you saw their leadership and then it got you to think, you know what? I want to be just like that. Would there have been a specific person, point, or uh, instance that got you to actually start on this journey to leadership? I'll start with my parents because I truly believe that everything starts in the home. And when you can lead right there within the home, that's where it's powerful. Everything beyond that, look, at the end of that, if you don't lead within your home, the kids are going to find a mentor or leader somewhere else. And don't get me wrong, over the years, I've had some truly amazing mentors, truly amazing leaders that I've looked up to. But first and foremost, it's my mother. She passed away last year, so but I still look up to her. My father, I'm having stronger conversations with him now more than ever. It's amazing that my mother passed away and that allowed me to open the door to stronger conversations with my dad, who I always looked up to, but he was really tough. You see, a little bit of my story is, is that I grew up in a military family. My mom was married four times. My dad was married two times. My mom was married to three soldiers and one musician. So that's where I get kind of the music and the, the voice and all these different things here that people that people love so much. But how I, I grew up in that military family to where, you know, there was discipline. It was always tough. It was discipline within the home that allowed me to be uh, the leader that I was out wherever I was, whether it was in school, whether it was in sports, whether it was in writing books, whether it was in coaching, teaching, training, mentoring, and ultimately within my military career, because I, I also served. I was active duty for 24 years. I have multiple combat tours where I went to Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait. I mean, I've been to a lot of different places over that time. And no matter where I was, I always learned something from the leaders that I had along the way, whether it was my high school baseball or basketball coach, college baseball or basketball coach, military leaders that I had throughout the way from the drill sergeants all the way up to the generals and people that I worked with uh, throughout my entire career. When I retired, I retired as a and I served, continued to serve as a government contractor. So I still had leaders there that I looked up to. Here's what I here's why I say all that. No matter where you are, there you are. And there's people of influence and impact. But when you are able to listen, you're able to learn. And that's one of the biggest lessons that I learned growing up is to listen to the leaders around me so that I can learn and I can understand that, you know what, not everything that they say is for me, but I'm able to put within my toolkit the things that work with me and the things that I can deliver to the people that I'm responsible for and that I lead. So that's kind of leadership. So for me, mom, dad, military leaders, coaches, and then everyday mentors like Evan Carmichael. And then last, but definitely not least, all of my students, all of my clients, because I learned from them, from their struggles, their roadblocks, their hardships, the things that they struggle with the most, then I can go back. And I can be the leader that they need within their life to help them grow. Fantastic. And Terry, just listening to your story, man, I mean, what you've been through, your life experience, the people that you've been around, I think have, um, you know, really brought you to be the man that you are. And before we even go any further, thank you for your service. It's not easy for somebody to, you know, go out and then still come back and be, um, you know, of sound mind and continue to want to help others be, do, and have a happier existence. So many people, when they go out, um, you know, they, they they come back a whole different person. And what would you say, um, you know, kept you going, especially in those hard battles that you were going through and still want to come back and send the elevator down to other people that may not even know what it's like to wake up at four o'clock in the morning? Mm -hmm. Well, I remember a job where I had to wake up at two o'clock in the morning and be in by three. So it varies from time to time. But look, here's what kept me grounded. You know, and I think that once you have something to keep you grounded, no matter where you are, whether you're in chaos, you can be calm if you're grounded. You know, and for me, it's always been family. I, and no matter where I was at, I always thought about my wife. I thought about my kids. I thought about the freedoms that other people took for granted and that we were out there fighting for. 
you know, freedom isn't free. It truly is. And I've lost a lot of people, a lot of friends, a lot of soldiers over the years as well, too. And freedom is definitely not free. We fight really hard for the things that, that we do and the things that we've done that even sometimes can go either unnoticed, unrecognized, or even unappreciated. And, and I get that. But you know what? At the end of that, it's not my job to really to really kind of dive into all that. It's my job to serve. It's my job to serve. And no matter where I am, I'm serving at a capacity that's greater than myself. Whether I'm in Iraq, whether I'm in Afghanistan, whether I'm wherever, I am built to serve. Just like my mentor, Evan Carmichael, says, I'm built to serve. And even though I, when I was in the military, I hadn't read that book yet. I actually read that book after I was out of the military. But as I read that book, I was like, you know what? I'm built to serve. When I was growing up, I was built to serve, you know, playing sports. You see, my dad, you know, he wanted to play sports. So he was living vicariously through me, letting me play sports. So I was like, okay, so now I was becoming that leader that he couldn't be. So I kept him in mind. You know, my mother, for example, she had a tough life. She had a rough life. And everywhere that I was, I was thinking about her. This service is for her. This service is for my dad. This service is for my wife, for my kids. So that they can have, It's it really, it comes down to, that sacrifice, that personal sacrifice, that professional sacrifice, once again, selfless service, which is one of the values of the military, that where we are at, we are serving a cause that is bigger than ourselves. So that keeps me grounded and going. I like that, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, when you started the uh, show, you were talking about, you know, the, the whole people just going for likes and the whole social media, you know, instant gratification type thing. But this whole perspective of going out, putting your life, neck and everything else on the line for other people and, um, you know, for their own freedom and things of that nature. How important is it for actually because that stems to now become your why? So many people will just show up into the world, don't even know what they're, um, you know, doing anything for. And if they don't get a like for a post, then, you know for them, it spoils their day. How important is it to ground yourself, like you say, into, um, you know, a, a cause bigger than yourself? Oftentimes people take things for granted. And the number one thing that pe people do take for granted, and this is the one thing that we're grounded in within the military, is that everything that we do, there is a life attached to that. Our decisions, there's a life attached to that. The, our actions, there is a life attached to that because one wrong move could cost a life. And I truly believe that a lot of people don't understand that. And when you put that much of a why into the importance of the things that you do, you will understand that as a leader, as a soldier, as a person, I need to make better decisions. I need to think, I need to decide, and I need to act. But I need to also think and decide and act not only for myself, but for other people, because my decisions could cost somebody their life. So I need to weigh that. I need to weigh the risks of that. What is the risk of me telling somebody what to do as a leader? What is the risk of me doing this? Do I need to walk with that person? Do I need to send them out on their own? Are they trained enough? There's a lot of things to unpack within that right there. But for me, no matter where I was at, what country, what mission, what job, I always attach the biggest why that I could as a soldier to it is that there is another life on the end of that decision that I must make as a leader. Fantastic. And and, and I like the humility that you bring to that. I've watched uh, military training and, and it's not the easiest thing to go by. And I've also just sort of wanted to enlighten it to starting your own business and things of that nature. Could you maybe put some parallels to that just so that people can see the intensity, um, you know, of what it actually takes, first of all, to be that leader. And then second of all, to actually create something that is profitable and enjoyable. It comes down to discipline. The number one thing within the military and in life for that matter is discipline. And that's one of the things that we're taught within the military is discipline. Like no matter what is going on as the leader, you must be the calm in the chaos. You must be the one disciplined because the moment that you as the leader lose your mind, lose your courage, your confidence, your discipline, everybody else falls right behind you. And that's when combat gets lost. That's when wars get lost. That's when decisions get made very poorly that cost people their lives. So number one, first and foremost, it's discipline. I have the discipline to do the things that others will not do. And that's the reason why I will have the things that others will not have. 
And I truly believe that it comes down to discipline. Whether you feel like it or not, it doesn't matter. You must have the discipline to push on whether you want to or not. You must have the discipline to stay focused because with so much distraction out there within the world, you can easily get distracted, but it takes that discipline to maintain focus. It takes the discipline to also keep other people in line when they want to take you down rabbit holes, for example. You know, and believe me, I had soldiers that would test test my limits day in and day out and be like, hey, you know, and I was like, no, hey, you know, this is what we're going to do. And I'm in charge and, and this, that, and the other. But at the opposite end of that spectrum right there, I must also have the discipline to listen. I must also have the discipline to understand that, hey, that other person also has knowledge, skills, experience, a different perspective on things as well, too. So I think whether it's life, whether it's business, whether it's personal, whether it's professional, I think that, number one, it takes the discipline to do a lot of different things, not only for yourself, but for others as well, too. I can imagine because... You know, when when you're in the military, like you said, you know, one false move, you could actually get the enemy, you know, getting the position of all your teammates. And I was listening to, you know, some military training that one of the first things that people get you to learn, I mean, the the leaders in, in, in the army get you to learn is to um, how to work with a with a with a jammed gun and mm -hmm. how to carry a dead body. So in mm -hmm. In life, we know we've got people like Brian Tracy that talks about eating the frog first. Can you maybe mm -hmm. put also those parallels? Because so many people don't quite understand, um, you know, how that works and what where the discipline actually then uh, marries, um, you know, the real life. Yeah. Because some people would just think, oh, it ain't about that. I'll just wake up, you know, go on social media, get a few likes. And before you know it, I'm probably, you know, an influencer or whatever they call it uh, these days. Yeah. So it comes down to intentions. What is your intention? Be intentional. A lot of times people are just really passive within their decisions that they do every single day and wonder why they're not achieving results. It's because they're so passive with everything instead of being intentional about what it is that you're saying, intentional about what it is that you're doing. So to kind of um, put some parallels to that, when you have the right systems and frameworks and training in place, you're always going to do what you're what you're conditioned to do. You're always going to do what you're trained to do. And if you don't have any training within that, you don't have any conditioning with that, you get lost, you get confused, you don't know what to do. Then at that point, what happens is you either quit, you either give up, you're like, oh, this isn't for me. And that could be within anything within life. But look, you're always going to do what you've always known because you don't know better. It, and I mean that. And that's why the reason why I said earlier about everything begins within the home. Discipline also begins within the home. Um, knowing what is right, what is wrong begins right there within the home. So when I went into the military, it was one of those things that, yeah, it started right there in basic training. Them drill sergeants drilled it in your head. You will do this. You will do that. You will not speak until spoken to. Like that was discipline right there. But it also condition you to the frameworks. What is right? What is wrong? What should you do? What, sh what must you not do? One of the things that I really, <laughs> I, I, I like, but I don't like, and I, and I form some of these two as acronyms within the military. The military loves all these acronyms and they'll throw a whole bunch of different things out at you. And those were always kind of the hardest things to really kind of learn. But, but look, at the end of that, you must be willing to learn. You must be willing, not necessarily making yourself a blank slate, but you must be willing to learn. You must be willing to evolve. You must be willing to put your ego to the side to understand that, hey, I don't have everything together, but maybe there's something there that I can learn from this situation. And I, I understood that. I understood that there was a lot of opportunity. There was a lot of opportunity to learn some knowledge, some skills, some experience that I didn't know that I was going to take with me until I actually left. And when I left, I was like, you know what, man, this thing, this guy said here made sense. This framework made sense. This thing made sense. So I'll share one piece of practical and tactical advice with the audience here. And in the military, we have this thing called a battle book. And this battle book is your guide. It's kind of like an if this, then that situation. If this particular situation, then this is what you're going to do, and that is going to be the result that you achieve. So we had this battle book that had all these different things that we had to do, and we had to learn this battle book from front to back. 
cover to cover because that was that was your guidance that was your battle book if you had this particular situation happen this is what we want you to do now of course every situation every scenario is not perfect you you have things that are going to happen in real time that's going to be outside of the battle book and i think that that's where some people do get stuck is that they just think that everything is too rigid and that's where flexibility comes into play, because as a leader, as a person, as an influencer, whatever label we want to put on it, we need to understand, yes, we have frameworks, we have systems, but you must understand that you also need to have that flexibility to understand that what works for one person might not work for the other person. What works in one situation might not work for the next situation. So even though we have frameworks, we have guides, we have battle books, we have all these knowledge, skills and experience. I think it comes down to understanding the flexibility part of that and how you can implement the right strategy or tactic or technique at the right place at the right time to get the right result. Fantastic. And you didn't leave all those frameworks in, in the battleground, right? You brought them in. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the AEIOU uh, always why framework. I wanted to actually do it in military speak. So Terry, yeah. What's the Alpha Echo India uh, Oscar Uniform Always Yankee Framework? You know, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, so you're going to laugh at this one because that's one of the dumbest frameworks that I ever came up with. Because in, in school, we were taught A-E-I-O-U and sometimes why. Yes. So I was just sitting here thinking one day as I was coaching my students and I was like, what's the dumbest thing that I can come up with that you're never going to forget? Because I remember when I was in the military, I said some of the craziest off the wall things to my soldiers, but you know what? They didn't forget it. They didn't forget it. And I think that when you're trying to teach people something, you have to be memorable. You have to say things that they're never going to forget. So when I came up with the AEIOU and always why framework, my students don't forget it. And let's dive into that. So A stands for access. E stands for engagement. I stands for increase. O stands for offer or opportunity. U stands for unite. And Y stands for you. So A is access. A, when you're in a business situation or when you're in a personal or professional situation, because you can use this framework anywhere, you want to gain access. You want to gain access to knowledge, skills, experience. You want to gain access to people. You want to gain access to influencers. You want to gain access to leaders. You want to gain access. And there's lots of ways to gain access. You can go to meetings. You can go to events. You can get on social media. You can do all, email. You can do all these different ways in which you can get access. We are actually more connected now more than ever. You can get access to pretty much anybody that you want to within this world right now. But there's lots of people that are doing it the wrong way, tremendously the wrong way to gain access to people. So when I teach about access, I have some other things that I show, okay, here's how you can gain access. But A stands for access, and it's truly important. Once you gain access, you want to engage. You want to engage in a meaningful way, not just to buy my stuff. Or, you know, because I see people getting on social media all the time and they and they seemingly engage. Well, they get access to you, but they're not really engaging. You have to engage in a meaningful way. Join the conversation. Add value. Share some tips, tools, techniques, and resources. Don't just get into somebody's DMs or on their social media or on their platforms and profiles and say, buy my stuff. And I see a lot of entrepreneurs making that mistake right there to where they just want to say, buy my stuff instead of engaging, building a relationship, which leads into I, increase. What are you increasing when you engage in a meaningful way? You're increasing people's curiosity. You're increasing people's want, need, and desire towards who you are. And then ultimately, as you increase their want, need, and desire to connect with you, it much more easily leads to the offer or the opportunity. And I think that the offer opportunity is two completely different things. You know, an offer is not necessarily an opportunity, but an opportunity is not always an offer. And I, I see some entrepreneurs getting those completely wrong. 
So once you get to the point to where you can actually present and offer an opportunity, whatever that looks like, like, for example, this is an opportunity for me to come on your show, share some value, share some wisdom, some knowledge to your audience as well, too. That's an opportunity for me. And you stands for Unite. I love the concept of Unite because I think that in a world that is divided, we must have unity. And I think that there, there's lots of opportunities that's out there for people to collaborate with each other and get into side of communities to where you can unite. You can unite similar people. You can unite different people. You can unite people with certain knowledge, skills, and experience. You can unite people in groups and communities in a meaningful way that can increase influence and impact. And then why? Why do I say always why? Well, always why is you, because you must show up. You must take an intentional effort. You must be the energy that you want to see out in the world. You must see, be the change that you want to see out there within the world. So it's always you. People, I think, are always looking for other things and other people for all these different things. But you know what? You have everything that you've ever needed right there inside of you. And people are afraid to really let that be vulnerable out there within the world. So I, I learned a long time ago that people will often judge you from a place of weakness because they do not understand the strength that it took for you to be vulnerable. And when you put yourself out there in such a meaningful way, I guarantee you that you will connect with people using the AEIOU and Always Why framework, no matter what platform. So hopefully that was helpful. I love that. It's like a whole, like I said, this is going to be a masterclass uh, in leadership because so many people haven't taken a step uh, to look at what is it that they're actually offering? Who are they and what are they trying to connect or get from any interaction that they're having with people? And I love how you've just made it so simple that the first thing that you 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 want to know is what what do you want to have after it's all said and done? What do you want access to? And it's just it's just remarkable how you've done it. And um, like you said, it's one of the simplest, simplest frameworks. Now, indulge me if you can, Terry, just based on what you have told me and what I've learned about you so far and who you have become. Um, growing up in Africa, you know, when you get to an age where you're about 13 to about 16, you go through what's called a rite of passage, which basically opens you up to leadership. It opens you up to ownership. It opens you up to just everything that breaks the pattern from you being a baby to a fully grown adult. Now, you would have gone through your own um, rite of passage when you, you know, when you, uh, when you were drafted to be in the military and you went and you served. And um, like I said, thank you for your service. And you came back a completely changed man, or at least a different person than the person who first tied up his boots, uh, you know, to the battleground the first time that happened. So many people don't get to have that opportunity. They just grow up, you know, kindergarten, school, high school, nothing drastic happens. You've talked about losing your mom. You've talked about going through all of these things. So many people, the, maybe the biggest thing that would have happened to them is the pandemic of the last couple of years or something like that. Now, would you say, what you have created, right? Comment on this if you feel like or, or not, or is somewhat of a rite of passage that takes people through from being just, um, you know, tantrum throwing three-year-olds to, or fully grown babies to people that actually lead, that actually are motivated and people that actually want to be, do and have a happier existence, which they can forge themselves, um, you know, along the way using this AEI or you or always why framework. Mm -hmm. The one thing that a lot of people don't understand when it comes to having a rite of passage is that you must already be doing the thing that you're doing in order to um, get the respect of others. Here's what I mean by that. In the military, when I was in the military, we had promotion cycles. 
So you didn't get recommended for promotion unless you've done certain things, unless you proved yourself that, hey, I can do this job. But in order to get recommended to the next level, you already have to be showing that you can do the job. So it's not a matter of, well, you know, I like Prosper. I think we're going to recommend him from promotion. So let's go ahead and get him promoted. No, you have to be able to prove your knowledge and your skills and your experience. You have to prove that you can lead people. You have to prove that you can do the job. You have to prove things. So when it comes down to a rite of passage, for me, it was always trying to prove myself to that next leader in line that I had exactly what it takes for that next level, for that next position, for that next thing. And oftentimes people doubt themselves. They truly do and don't have the courage. They don't have the confidence. They don't feel that they have everything that it takes. But look, my mentor, Evan Carmichael, is out trying to solve the biggest problem in the world and people don't believe. And that's what we're trying to share every single day on whatever platform that we're streaming on, because we're streaming 24 seven on a lot of different platforms. People don't believe within themselves. Look, I, I had confidence instilled with me when I was when I was younger. Like I said, my my dad was in the military. My mom married three other guys. You know, they two of them were in the military. I always had that discipline to do those things throughout my entire life. So when I got into the military myself and I started going through, first and foremost, I have to thank my wife. My wife worked really hard with me throughout my military career. She helped me study. She pushed me in directions and places that I never thought possible because she was right there with me. She, she helped me study. She helped me learn everything. I learned these books from the front to the back, word for word. I literally would memorize three, four, 500 page books, every single word. So when it come down to proving myself at these boards, at these, you know, these events that we would have, whether it was physical, whether it was mental, whether it was answering a bunch of questions, I knew this stuff. So when it come down to a rite of passage, and this is something that a lot of people don't understand. When I got ready to get promoted, I felt like I belonged there. I knew that I belonged there because I was already there. So many people say, well, I can do that. Well, if you can, then what's holding you back? Well, I should have done that. Well, if you should have, why didn't you? Well, I could have done that. Well, if you could have, once again, why didn't you? I think so many people get in their own way and they never allow themselves to shine because they have these limiting beliefs that hold themselves back from what is possible. I don't know what's possible, but I know one thing I'm possible. Mm, I like that. I like that a lot. Now, Terry, for those that are uninitiated, what would be the first, um, you know, thing that they could do maybe to get a hold of you just so they can see some of the stuff that you've got going on? Um, you know, the courses, the podcasts and all that stuff that you're doing and putting out there. Yeah. So, I mean, my website is terrywadethompson.com, www.terrywadethompson.com. Uh, once you're over there, you'll see all of my courses, my books. You'll see ways in which you can connect with me on social media. I'm at Terry Wade Thompson everywhere, except for Twitter. Twitter, I'm you know, they have different character limitations, but it's Terry W. Thompson over on Twitter. But if you head over to my website, terrywadethompson.com, you'll be able to connect with everything that I'm working on right there. Absolutely. I'll make sure that we've got all those links in the show notes below. And while you were talking about your website, I just had a quick look at it. You've got a really powerful tagline. And I think it goes along the lines, become the leader you are meant to be and the world deserves. Now, first of all, what does this mean for you personally? And, you know, how does it resonate with the work that you're doing? People play small. They really do. People play small and they don't believe within themselves that they're full capability. So a concept within the military is something called capability development. And that's one of the things that I love to do. That's one of the things that I do as a leader. When I'm working with people, I'm developing your capability. You are capable of significantly much more than you ever thought possible. And it's my job to extract that out of you so that you can be the leader that you were meant to be that you initially don't believe you are. Because I think, as the great John Maxwell said, everything, and I mean everything, rises and falls on leadership. So I teach people first and foremost to be a leader that they are meant to be and that others deserve. Because as I said earlier, we are in a likership economy and the world needs leadership. So when I'm coaching, teaching, training, mentoring, leading people, 
That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm teaching you to be the leader that you are meant to be and that others deserve. Fantastic. And you you keep referring to the fact that, you know, so many people are not stepping up to the plate, you know, like really fully taking full ownership of who they're meant to be. Uh, and they're yeah. coming short on the other end, you know. So in your sort of experience, what are some of the pitfalls or maybe challenges that these entrepreneurs are facing and how, and how are you guiding them to overcome these hurdles? It's overthinking. It's absolutely 100% overthinking. And the number one thing that you must do with no matter what situation that you're facing, you must think, decide, and act. And th in that order right there, think about the things that you want to say. Think about the things that you want to do. Think about the influence you want to have. Think about the impact that you want to have. Then you must decide. You must decide what is that going to look like? What are the things that I need to do in order to make that look like I want it to look like? So once you make the decision, then you must take the action. A lot of times people are stuck within the thinking mode and they never go into the decision or action mode because they're stuck. They're stuck right there within that thinking mode. Well, look, I know that there's a great book called Think and Grow Rich, but if you think you're just going to sit there and think and actually grow rich, it's not going to work for you. You still must decide and you still must act. Absolutely. I quite like that because you're bringing in, you know, your past world, you're bringing in what you're experiencing and you're also just putting it all together and delivering a magnificent package uh, into the future. And as I surely predicted that this was going to be a masterclass and I can't thank you enough for the time that you spend with us on the show today, but it will be remiss for me to uh, leave this episode without doing one thing that I felt like you wanted to do. Um, there's always something about gratitude and being thankful for all those people that have paved the way, uh, whether intentionally or unintentionally to who we've become and who we're becoming. Now, you brushed up on something that really, really caught my attention. Now, Terry, what's your wife's name? Uh, Miriam. Okay. And if Miriam is watching right now with the words that you sort of put in between the message, what would you want her to know? Something that we can just extrapolate with that context, just what you want her to know for what you have become. I'll share it like this right here. Every time that I was ever deployed on a military deployment, it was lonely. I didn't always have her there with me. I had to take all of that courage that she gave me back here at home with me. I had to take all that confidence out there with me. And everywhere that I was, she was right there with me. Her, both of my kids, I have two kids. They were with me everywhere that I went. And I didn't always have them there with me but the, physically, but they were always there with me mentally. And if there's any one thing that I really would love to say and it goes into the great lyrics of the Journey song, Faithfully, because she's always been there faithfully for me. My kids have always been there faithfully for me as well, too. And there's one line in that song that I will never forget, and it's, I get the joy of rediscovering you. Every time that I came home, I got the joy of rediscovering my wife. I got the joy of rediscovering my kids. I got the joy of rediscovering the freedoms that so many people take for granted. I got the joy of rediscovering who I was, because even though in some places I may have lost myself, I got the joy of rediscovering who that person is, what that person is, why that person is each and every time that I come home. So every day when I come home and I walk through that door and I see my wife and my kids, I get the joy of rediscovering them. And I don't ever want to miss those moments. Wow. I, I think I just felt that more than anything else and um you know at the end of the day when somebody first of all gives you advice and teaches you new songs and makes them personal that is profound i can't thank you enough terry for the time that you spent with us on the show today now if you would just maybe give one last bit you know of advice to one of those people that are just meh you know, that's my life. That's who I'm becoming. I can't be old at. I didn't go running in the military. And there's always going to be a next platform, which I'm just going to be top on and become an influencer. I can't go out and do everything. And I don't want every day to be a Monday. What would be 
words of advice that you just give to, um, you know, entrepreneurs out there, especially the one person who's watching this video right now that is about to jump on and start following you wherever you are on the internet. I love that, Prosper. Thank you so much for this opportunity and that one golden nugget, that one piece of advice that I would give anybody watching this, continue to create moments that become memories that last forever. Wow. I think we've just created something. We've frozen a moment in time, which is going to be an everlasting testimony to the work, the effort, and everything else that you have done, even though we've managed to do it in 30 minutes, but you've given us 30, I mean, 30 years worth of, you know, your life, your stories, and everything else that has come along with that. And I can't thank you enough, first of all, like for your service and the service that you are now rendering to everybody else up there, Terry Thompson. I love it. Prosper, thank you so much. Fantastic. And there you have it, folks. Terry Thompson, the man with a mission to guide you to the best version of yourself. And remember, if you want to lead others, you must first lead yourself. And I encourage you to check out um, Terry's website where you're going to find the Entrepreneur Bundle and something he calls the Bluff Podcast. I hope this is something that you will um, you know, learn immensely from because in the 30 minutes that we just stayed with him, a book can be written Um Speaking of which, have you written books that people can also get on Amazon or things of that nature? Can you just give them a bit of a plug in, in this last uh, second? Yeah, sure. So I, all of my books are on, you know, they're on my website as well, too, within within my programs. But uh, I am on Amazon. I, I've got ebooks. I've got uh, audio books as well, too, out there on uh um, audible as well too. So look, I, I write about leadership. I write about life. I'm also in the process of writing, uh, some business books as well too, but leadership has been my primary focus. So I have books about how to be a mentor. Uh, I have books called leadership solved a book called leadership is, and a book called every, uh, secrets that every leader must know or leadership secrets. Every leader must know. I'm telling you, I, we need leadership within this world. So I want you to grab those books Become the leader you're meant to be and others deserve. Well, fantastic. I really appreciate you for leading us in this discussion here today because I think so much, um, you know, has been, um, you know, unraveled just by your presence. So thank you so much for sharing your wisdom on the online prosperity experience. And for those that are watching up until right now, please don't forget to subscribe because you never know who we're going to bring uh, onto the show and you don't want to miss out on uh, insights like this. Until next time, this has been Prosper and we're signing off. Keep prospering, my friends. Bye for now.